Greetings, friends around the world. This is Dr. Bob Teal for the Bible News Prophecy Channel. Have you heard of Kern's Large Hadron Collider? Could the Large Hadron Collider cause destruction on planet Earth? Does it have military potential? What do you know about it? Do you know anything about it? Could it be alluded to in the Bible? Could it help fulfill biblical prophecies? Well, that's what we're going to go through in this, uh, this video. Now, this particular project is a European project. It's ran by the European Center for Nuclear Research, or officially, Organisation Europeane pour la Recherche Nucleare, which is also calls itself Kern. I'd like to read something from Kern's uh, website. It says, Large Hadron Collider is the world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator. It first started up on 10 September uh, 2008 and remains the latest addition to Kern's accelerator complex. The Large Hadron Collider consists of a 27 kilometer ring of superconducting magnets. 27 kilometers, it's almost 20 miles around. It's a, big, it's a very big tunnel, if you will. Uh, they have accelerating structures that are supposed to boost energy and particles along the way. They have uh, two high-energy particle beams that travel close to the speed of light before they're made to coll collide. The beams go in opposite directions, and they're guided around by an accelerator ring by strong magnets. And it's also, these magnets are chilled to minus 271.3 degrees uh, Celsius, which is actually a temperature colder than outer space. So this is a major deal. The speeds and temperatures that they're used are impressive. I'm going to read something from a scientific article with a publication date of September of 2016, even though I'm doing this before this publication date, because I read this. So something else related to the Large Hadron Collider. The Advanced Proton-Driven Plasma Wake Field Accelerator Experiment, called AWAKE, aims at studying plasma wake field generation and electron acceleration driven by protein bunches. It's a proof-of-principle R&D experiment at Kern and the world's first proton-driven plasma wake field acceleration experiment. Okay? And then it gives more information about that. Now, this Large Hadron Collider from Kern has made a lot of important physics discoveries. Nobel Prize was given for supposed finding of something called the Higgs bosom. Now, some have wondered about the potential of this being... Uh, 666 from the Bible. Huh? Why would they do that? Well, if you look at the symbol for Kern, it kind of looks like 666. So somebody sent me something back in 2008. It says, so I'm not going to embarrass people who have confused Kern's logo for the mark of the beast, but it's not good. Kern's logo is 666. There's a bunch of lines within angles. And it does look like, if you wanted to look for 666, you can certainly find something resembling uh, 666 in there. But does that mean that the Kern Large Hadron Collider is 666? No. I don't believe it's possible that 666 is Kern because it says in Revelation chapter 13, 666 is the number of a man. And a machine is not a, a, on a man, so I don't believe that. But it's interesting because I do believe that the Kern people, presuming they remain alive to the time, will support the 666 that will be rising up. But again, I don't think that Kern is 666. Uh, speaking of Kern, there's one thing that I found kind of interesting. I'm going to show you something that's outside of its headquarters. See how well that may come here. This is a statue to the Hindu god Shiva, which means the destroyer. And that's got nothing to do with biblical prophecy, but I do think it's interesting that they have a destroyer uh, symbol outside there. Uh, Lord Shiva, according to certain beliefs, is the destroyer of the world following Brahma, the creator, and Vishnu, the preserver. Okay, Shiva's responsible for the change both in the form of death and destruction. 
And in a positive sense, destroying the ego, the false identification of the form. Well, whatever, but I think it's odd that they would have chosen to, to put, put it there. Now, some don't believe that there's military potential for the Large Hadron Collider. I'd like to read something from uh, Dr. Joseph Wang, who has a PhD in astrophysics. This came out in February 2014. Why is the Large Hadron Collider Research Facility built in Switzerland, not elsewhere? It starts off. Kern itself established in the early 1950s, and there's good reasons why it was put in Switzerland, because Switzerland is neutral, and that ensured that Kern research could not be used for military purposes. Swiss neutrality was an important reason why the Large Hadron Collider continued to be funded and the U.S. Collider was canceled. Particle physics in the U.S. has close ties with the defense. And uh, the U.S. finally cut its funding for the Collider because Kern was from beginning in a neutral territory. It was largely unaffected by the end of the Cold War. There's also a rather strong anti-nuclear movement in Europe, and keeping it in Switzerland, where the technology can't be used for military purpose, keeps Kern out of these political fights. And that was what one astrophysicist says. He's not a politician, though, and he's not a military person, I don't think. Being in Switzerland, and actually part of it goes into France, but being in Switzerland does, certainly does not prevent the militarization of what might come out of here. Now, I'd like to read something from James Donahue, it's titled, Will the Hadron Collider Produce New Military Weaponry? It says, physicists plan other experiments they hope will give them understanding of theorized concepts like dark matter, antimatter, and supersymmetry. Many scientists around the world worry the experiments from the machine might produce a release force that's capable of literally destroying our world. Now, prior to it going on, I wrote that the Large Hadron Collider would not destroy the world. Some think it might turn its whole thing into a black hole and all that kind of stuff. It's not going to destroy the world that way. So I know there's doom and gloomers out there who've seen certain things with plasma and other things in the sky uh, in 2016. But the Large Hadron Collider cannot possibly destroy the whole world. But doesn't mean it couldn't have technology that can be used. Now, some of you may know that back in, the, I think it was 2003, there was a, a researcher who was arrested at the Large Hadron Collider who had ties to the terrorist organization Al-Qaeda. He'd been working on a particle, well actually he started working there in 2003, anyway he got uh, arrested and Kern issued a statement to try to assure everyone that research lacks any potential for military applications and that the arrested person had no contact with anything that could have been used for terrorism. Well, that's what they're saying, but I found that's interesting. So that, anyway, and this goes further. It's like, why would a terrorist organization then have somebody planted in there before it started, for years before it started? Then he was there after it started, and he finally got, a, got arrested. So he says, or writes, is Kern a secret black budget military research program in disguise? disguise? He says, based on the international links, this seems unlikely. And I'm going to agree, in one sense. But as physics zero in on highly elusive and potentially dangerous targets, such as Higgs bosom, antimatter, and strangulets, we can be sure military eyes are watching carefully. Looking back at history, we are sure that German physicist Otto Hahn, Lisa, Meitner and Franz Strassmann never foresaw the impact on world history when they split the uranium atom almost in half with a bombardment of neutrons producing barium and krypton. They were shocked by the spectacular charge of some 200 million electron volts in the release energy that occurred. So what he's saying correctly is whether or not anybody associated with Kern originally wanted to have any kind of military applications they're talking about basic particle physics. When you went into the basic atom before, and they learned how to split that, you end up with nuclear bombs and, and all that kind of stuff. Now, the Large Hadron Collider is hoped by the Europeans to develop technology that's going to make life better for everybody, but also improve their economy. But I also believe that some spin-offs of it 
are very likely to be military, militaristic or be used by the military. Now, this isn't the only collider project that's going on in Europe. The Germans have something they're working on called FAIR, which stands for Facility for Anti-Proton and Ion Research. It's, per, it's currently in the process of uh, construction. I'm going to read something about it. it says, Federal this is from its website, FAIR's website. The Federal Republic of Germany, together with the state of Hesse, is a major contributor to the construction. And they've got nine international partners currently. I looked this up uh, July 23rd, 2016. Finland, France, India, Poland, Romania, Russia, Slovenia, Sweden, and the United Kingdom bear 30% of the cost. FAIR will be a host laboratory for basic research for about 3,000 scientists uh, from about 50 countries. I mentioned nuclear research. You could call that basic research. Now, I believe that technology being developed at, by FAIR once it comes on along with the Large Hadron Collider and other technologies, perhaps like the helium fusion stellarator uh, that the Germans are working on, are going to help the Germans, the Europeans in general, the Germans in particular, strengthen their economies and possibly develop a type of military technology that the world will marvel at. If you got your Bibles, you might want to follow along. I'm going to read something from the book of Revelation, Revelation 13, starting in verse 3. This is from the New King James Version of the Bible. And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded, and a deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast who is able to make war with him? Now I believe that last portion of Revelation 13, verse 4, is talking about a unique form of well warfare. Since this is an end-time prophecy, and we expect that the end-time warfare is going to use high-tech weapons, it's likely that something developed from these kind of projects will be utilized. It also should be mentioned that the Bible does say that the end time European King of the North beast power will destroy the nation with the strongest or the mightiest military, or strongest fortresses, which in the 21st century would be the United States, and others. You, I'm not going to read this here, but if you go to Daniel chapter 11 verses 39 through uh, 40. Four, three, you're going to see not only a, a power that sounds like the United States, but also an Islamic power, a power based in Islamic nations, that's also going to be destroyed by this particular power once it rises up. But specifically, is there anything that they've done that could have that kind of potential? Interestingly, in May of 2009, a movie came out called Angels and Demons, based on a book by Dan Brown. And in it, they captured antimatter and something blew up and all that kind of stuff. Well, when it came out, people said, ah, oh, that can't happen. You can't store antimatter. It doesn't last any length of time. But actually, not too many years later, uh, let me read something from June 5th, 2011. Current scientists have now been able to isolate unstable antimatter for a grand total of nearly 17 minutes. That's a far cry from experiments performed last fall when they were only able to record the presence of antimatter for f fractions of seconds. The increased longevity should now give researchers the time needed to perform studies on anti-atoms related to change parity time reversal symmetry. People didn't believe, scientists didn't believe antimatter could exist for any length of time. Per current tired to work on it, it could it be there for half an instant or some really short time. Then they were able to store it for 17 minutes. Now, I don't know if they've tried to store it longer since, but from what I read, they only tried to store it for 17 minutes. It wasn't like they lost it at 17 minutes. And I'd like to read something about antimatter from NASA. Antimatter is real stuff, not just the stuff of science fiction. Antimatter is firmly in the realm of science, with some aspects even entering the technology realm. There's a lot of speculation about what you could do with antimatter. Antimatter is matter with its electrical charge reversed. Anti-electrons called positrons are like electrons but with a positive charge. Anti-proteins, excuse me, protons, are like protons with a negative charge. And basically when matter and antimatter collide, they release energy and basically knock each self out. And it requires the same safety precautions as needed with nuclear reactions. And that's from NASA.
And let me read something else. This is from a current related website. This, okay, it says, when matter and antimatter come into contact, they annihilate. They annihilate. Sounds a lot like it's got military potential to me. Now, they've been working on a lot of different particles over there. They've got something there called petaquarks that could have some effect. Something called uh, quark glucon plasma, sometimes called strangolettes, which some believe could have devastating effects. The various particles, they've been working on stuff called dark matter, they've working on stuff called dark energy, as well as just looking at how things happen the way they normally uh, don't. In other words, things that we normally can't see. It is possible that the Large Hadron Collider is helping Europe get to the point where we'll have the technology it will need to temporarily rule, rule the world, which your Bible says it will do. Since the Bible says they're going to rule the world, somehow something is going to have to help, help it do that. According to the Bible, as I mentioned Revelation 13, 3 and 4, uh, Daniel 11, uh, 39 through uh, 43, and other passages, Europe is going to become militarized and for a time be successful, as well as, according to Revelation 17, 18, for a time basically rule the world economically. I believe that the Large Hadron Collider certainly could be a factor in these particular prophecies. So is the Large Hadron Collider necessarily completely militaristic? No, it will probably have a, a variety of other benefits uh, to, the, to the world. But does it have potential? And what they're working on have the potential to cause destruction, including even perhaps destruction in the United States? Yes. But the Bible doesn't say it per se is going to do it, but it does say it's going to happen. Believe your Bibles. This is Dr. Bob Teal for the Bible News Prophecy Channel.